Hey guys, Faxi Nandu here from Ocean Swift Synthesis, and I would like to show you our uh, plugins uh, Aeolian Pulsar Harp, uh, both the full version and the free version for the Scope uh, Fusion platform. So, the Aeolian Harp, uh, before we look at our devices, uh, you can have a little look by yourself at it. Uh, if you want to read up on it on uh, Wikipedia, there's a pretty good article, and if you Google it as well. Um, basically, it is a wind-based instrument. It is an ancient instrument. Uh, as you can see, it's like an, sort of like an environmental statue. Um, we're talking about the real thing, not our model thing, of course. Um, there's a few pictures. They can be various shapes, uh, and various kind of structures. There's all sorts. someone's garden and basically what it is is an instrument that works by having um, a strings stringed instrument um, that is sitting against the wind uh, as you maybe saw too bad that I closed all of them um, okay here it's a little bit different the strings are of different lengths but um they can also be of the same length uh, what makes the sound and the harmonics is the way the wind kind of blows over the strings uh, at different pressures and at different directions. Uh, you can read up on it a little bit. Um, it causes different harmonics to kind of um, come out. Uh, basically what you have is, let's say you have a one tuned to the C note, uh, basic uh, fundamental uh, harmonic, and then you'll have a series of harmonics above it that will express themselves as the wind is playing the instrument. So basically what it is is a drone device um, kind of playing by itself, that is the point of it. Uh, it's not a, it's not an expressive instrument uh, per se uh, as we are used to, you know, like a piano or a synthesizer. And we kind of try to implement this into the scope. Uh, it is very, very nice because um, the Aeolian harp is kind of always in tune. Um, you always will hear uh, harmonic relations, but it will never be the same. It always changes and evolves over time. So we represented this by having sort of like 16 strings, uh, 16 various harmonics, that you can kind of set the overall volume of the harmonic of each of them, each partial here. Uh, and this is for both the free and the full version. We'll get into the differences in a bit. So what you do is you set the overall volume that it can reach, but then um, it doesn't reach... Let's just make an example. Let's take off everything. So I'm just turning off each and every one. And then let's take, let's say, this one. So you see I'm setting the overall volume, but then it still sways and moves around by itself. Uh, so this is, this is representing the wind moving across this, um, this string. Now, of course, as I, as I have the overall all the way to the top, then it'll all the time be playing. But if I take it halfway, then it'll sway around and you'll get that Aeolian effect. Sometimes it'll disappear completely, sometimes it'll come in, sometimes it'll be really dominant, you know? And once you start adding in, and each each one of these has a different algorithm behind it moving it around. It's not completely random um, as we would have liked it to be. It's kind of pseudo-random. But once you have all these in play, then a random, you know, it really does become random. So what we have, like, if you have the pure, uh, the pure sound is just like this. And I think this is already really nice and pretty representing. Personally, I could put it on a really low volume and just, you know, use it for, like, sleep, sleep aid or meditation aid. And Now let's get into our uh, own controls here. Let's look at the free one first, because um, if we look at the free one and the full one, uh, the free one basically has... Like the full one has everything the free one has plus more features. So if we want to look at the free one and then we can, you know, just look at the additional features of the full one. Um, now I was going to talk a little bit about the OSC, but let's first talk about how you, how you kind of um, use this device. So as you saw, I wasn't playing any MIDI. I was just clicking this drone button here 
and it was already playing. So we have offered uh, two basic ways to use this device. Um, one thought, like we're we're trying to go a little bit away from the Western thought of like you know playing instruments. And if you look a little bit more into like Eastern influence, like in uh, uh, traditional Indian music and uh, maybe Aboriginal music, like uh, stuff like the didgeridoo and the shruti um, and the tambura from India and things like that, they're actually like drone devices that basically just provide a, a harmonic background. So if you want to use it in that sense, like let's say you're in a live performance and you just want to set your um, basic fundamental tone and harmonics, um, you don't even need to use MIDI at all. You can set the basic root over here, and you have a cross from C1 to C5, and you can set the the very basic root. You can also then tune it, but it's basically the same. You know, if you take, uh, let's say, F F2, and you want to go two octaves down, you can do it either here or just go two octaves down here. But um, basically, if you're, say, on C5, you can actually go a lot higher by just using the tune knob. But um, the tune knob is more useful when in MIDI mode, and I'll show you in a minute. So let's just get down to drone, uh, finish talking about the drone mode. So you set the root over here, you click on drone, and that's really all you have to do. And it'll just go on playing forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, now, if you altern alternatively, if you want to use it in MIDI mode, now I'm clicking on my external keyboard. Oh, it's actually playing on the, sorry, it's playing on this one at the moment. Uh, let's take the volume for this one off, so we're only hearing only hearing this one, the free, the free version. So now I'm playing notes. But you notice, um, I've, I've been playing like, you know, this is C, D, E, F, and it's all on the same note. So again, even in MIDI mode, you are provided um, two options. Uh, if, if drone is off, then when playing notes, it's basically just an envelope. It's, a, it's an on-off for the machine itself. But it'll still use it using uh, the pitch information from here, from the root knob uh, button. So I'm playing... So let's say you want to set it as a drone, but you don't want to have it to playing all the time, so you can still use MIDI uh, just to give it the on-off information. This is one option you have. Now, if you want to actually play notes, then you can turn on MIDI mode. And then you can use it as to play it as any other synthesizer, And I, but again, each time that you play it, of course, you will be hitting a different spot, uh, like you know, each one of these will be on a different volume spot. So you kind of combine uh, artistic expression with you playing with the sort of pseudo-random Aeolian harp. You're playing, but you're playing on a wind on a wind instrument. Like uh, this, is, this is kind of a cool idea that we had. So. Um, that goes for the, the actual functionality of how you use it itself. Uh, the extra options that you have on the free version, uh, first of all, in the OSC section, um, you have the sway knob. Now, the sway knob, what it does, I told you that each one of these is moving. Uh, the volume of each harmonic is kind of swaying in the background um, with a different algorithm. So there's different speeds going on, and everything is overlapping a little bit differently. Uh, what the sway knob does is it influences um, each and every one of the algorithms. So it, it kind of provides, uh, let's, let's call it like a different seed, okay, for like the randomization. It's a different, different seeding for everything and it kind of just changes the overall. It's really subtle, okay? You won't hear like a huge difference if I play here. And if I play here, you have no idea what it did, but it did something and it's a little bit different. Uh, so if you want to get a little bit more, let's say you want to, I don't know, you want to play this for like an hour as a background. So you can be slowly automating this thing really slowly, not like I'm doing now, just for an example. And you'll get more variation, just a little subtle. The whole key here is to be subtle. Um, let's say, again, if we're using this, for example, to set a drone, to set a harmonic tone, or even for something like meditation, you want that little dynamic change, but you don't want it to change too much, you know? Uh, you don't want it to kind of become 
too rhythmic or um, I don't know. You just want a little subtle change. Uh, the other stuff that you have here is pretty self-explanatory. You have a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter that you just turn on and, and off. Uh, these are really subtle filters, you know, just to take a little bit over the top um, if we're talking about the low-pass and just to kind of clean the very, very, very low end. It's more like a DC. Uh, look at it like a DC filter, the high-pass. So if you turn it on, you know, it, it really depends. And the chorus, it just gives it a little bit more depth. Let's kind of, let's turn it on from over here. You can get really, really cool backgrounds with this thing. So this is just the machine, you know, uh, if you uh, throw this thing into a reverb, uh, maybe compress the whole thing after the reverb, you know, give it some like, it can become as gritty or as mellow as you want it, you know? So this is uh, just the basic one. Um, the idea for the free one is not just to provide you with a free device, but also if you don't need, um, if you just want like the sort of, if you just want this harmonic setting thing, you know, you don't need it, the full fledged instrument and it is of course a lot lighter on DSP as well than the full device. Now let's look at, um, well, one more thing, of course, even the free one, you know, uh, we provided a bunch of presets. So uh, if you have a scope, definitely download this and check it out. You can get, you can be, be, be really surprised at what you can do. Okay, so this was the free one. Now let's look at the full one. This is the Aeolian Pulsar Harp full version, um, which is a for sale version that you can find on our website or on Sonic Core website. Um, now, as you see, uh, like I said also, uh, the top is the same. The same idea, the same harmonics, the same everything. The OSC section is the same. Uh, the tone, the root, the sway, and the way it behaves with the drone and with the MIDI. And you have, but you have a lot more going on. Um, the first thing right here, you see how you have a mod shape. This is an on off button. And you have one for each and one of the partials. Uh, what it does is again, like I mentioned, the sway uh, knob is like just changes the seed a little bit. So this changes the, um, the modulation for each and every partial from to a different shape. Uh, it's, Instead of a sign, like sort of sign, uh, it goes to it becomes sort of a triangle. Um, I modulated sign into a modulated triangle. So it just again, it's a little bit of variation. It's really really subtle, um, and you can turn various ones off and various ones on. Uh, it goes together with the overall volume, of course, with the sway knob, with the root. Everything is supposed to kind of interact, and you can really be surprised that how much even this changes, you know, if you, it changes the, the sweet spots that you get to is kind of what I'm getting at. So let's turn it on for a minute. The main, main, main thing about this one is that you have an FM section here. Now the FM is provided either internally by a sine uh, oscillator whose frequency is determined here or if you click this, uh, as you can see on the device itself, there is an uh, external FM input, which is really cool because you can have, for example, like the Aeolian Free providing FM to the Big Brother. And then, you know, the FM coming in and out and all of that. And this one's frequency is changing all the time, but it's all harmonic. Yeah, you can get, you know, you get the idea. You can get really, really creative with this shit, you know, so experiment around. But let's for for just to listen. Let's turn it back into the internal. So uh, you have an FM section, and you can also have a modulation, internal modulation for the FM section. Um, mod. You can modulate the mod, the depth of the FM, and you can modulate the frequency. So you have actually a sine FM oscillator, a sine LFO for the depth, and a sine LFO for the fr for the freq. Ah. Something like that. So, let's turn it on. Listen just for a second for uh, to the FM. And this, 
the whole e the whole ah I'm sorry, the whole FM here it brings a ton to the plate. It changes this device completely from you know because here it's just a sine wave, and here it's just endless amounts of um, sources that you can get using the FM basically. Now another thing is you can do kind of pretty crazy stuff. Um, let's say you we know that A is 440, and we can have the FM at you know some sort of multi I don't know just just experimenting around right but um some sort of like harmonic relationship we get pretty cool stuff with the chorus section from the free one here we also have a delay on the full version the BPM can be set up here and it can be put into sync mode the, o the overall output has a distortion as well and it really kind of makes it a lot more gnarly than the free version really cool um, and of course we added as you can see some filters to this section uh, the low high pass filter from the free one comes back here but it, a little bit in a different form the high pass, I mentioned it's kind of like a DC filter, so here it is actually called DC kill because it basically kills um, the low stuff. And here it's uh, actually more more important than the free one because you have FM and uh, comb filtering and a lot of stuff going on that can kind of, kind of mess around your low end a little bit. So um, if you feel like it, you can just click this and it kind of cleans it a little bit. Low pass here, uh, same as here, you can turn it on or off, but you also have a uh, control for the cutoff point of the low pass, so. Again, uh, another filter, band pass filter this time. And the bandpass filter has its own dedicated um, LFO, mod depth, rate. You can sync it to a divider based on the device BPM. And a really cool option for a comb filter, which again changes the game a whole lot. especially when modulated here by its dedicated LFO. So yeah, you can get really, really cool stuff. I'm surprised myself oftentimes, you know, because uh, we built it as a harp machine, but um, you can also use it, like I said, as a really cool effect synth. Let's listen to some presets. So this does a lot more, of course, than just the usual wind harp.
this is the type of stuff that I personally like. Now, of course, you can use a couple of these. We can turn on uh, this one. Now I will risk saying that um, none of you have seen anything like this device, and I hope you kind of, I hope you kind of like this last sound. I think really kind of demonstrated, and I and I hope you got a kick out of this. And uh, if you have a scope, be sure to check out our Aeolian Pulsar Harp. You can download the free version for um, PCI and for Excite boards. Uh, you can listen to some more of the sounds, and really soon, uh, depending on when you're watching this video, the full Pulsar Harp will be available through our website. So thanks for checking this out. Um, get creative with Ocean Swift synth Synthesis devices. See you later, guys.